So this video is about the second half of chapter two, sets, the number of subsets, and the four principles in terms of sets. That's my fourth time recording this video. The third time was awesome, but I, I forgot to press the recording button. So let's try it again. If you're gonna read any sections of the book, you may really need to read this one because there's a lot of notation in terms of sets and it's pretty dry. You say it's very formal, but it's really useful. And so you just have to see what it looks like on the page. But today I'm gonna to talk about more of the concepts involved with, with sets because these are all concepts that we've, we've seen before. So a set is just a handful or a collection of objects. And the order of the objects doesn't matter. You can mix them all up, but they all have to be different from each other. So in this case, I picked six different pieces of yellow Lego. The cardinality or size of the set is the number of things in it. So in this case, the cardinality is six. If you have uh, two sets like this and this, their union is just putting them all together. If you have two sets where one is the set of yellow pieces and one is the set of rectangles that are two by four, then their intersection is the elements that are in common. In this case, the yellow two by four rectangle. If you have a set, you can look at a subset which is just a sub collection or sub handful of the things. And once you have a subset, you can also look at the complement, which are the other things. So those are all some basic notions in terms of sets. The biggest theorem in this chapter is theorem 2.5.16, which is about the number of subsets. It turns out that even a set of small size, like six, has a lot of different subsets. For instance, we could take all of the elements, we could take none of the elements, we could take any one of the six elements, or there are six choose two ways to take two of the elements. There are a lot of subsets, and we will revisit this again when we look at Pascal's triangle in chapter four. But today we'll take the perspective of counting the number of subsets by thinking about choices. So for each element, we have a choice. Is it in or out? For instance, maybe this one, we want it to be in. And this one, out. This one, in. This one, in. This one, out. And this one, in. So by making a yes, no binary choice for each element, we can uniquely determine a subset. And each subset can be found in that way. So for each element, we have two choices. And so by the multiplication principle, we have two times two times two times two times two times two, times two choices. So let's revisit that more formally with some notation. <laughs> okay, so chapter two, sections five, six, and eight, sets, the number of subsets, and the four principles in terms of sets. So, Theorem 2.5.16, if S is a set with N elements, then the number of subsets of S is two to the N. So for example, when N equals three, then there are eight subsets. And the proof of this, which is in the text, is just the same as before. We will take our set, sets we're gonna write like this with very um, curly braces, and then the elements A1, A2, and A3 are inside those curly braces. 
So the order doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which one is first, second, or third, but we need to label them so we can talk about those elements. So to make a subset, we have to decide, is A1 in the subset? Maybe we decide yes. Is A2 in the subset? Maybe we decide no. And is A3 in the subset? Maybe we decide yes. And so from that, we've made a subset, A1 and A3. And so the number of choices is two choices for A1, two choices for A2, and two choices for A3. And so all together, we have eight, which is two times two times two choices. Okay, so you can read the theorem, the proof of this theorem in the textbook, but it's basically this idea. So let's talk about a bit of notation. If you have two sets, their union is done with a cup symbol. Their intersection is done with a cap symbol. The difference is done with a subtraction symbol. So, and the complement um, if, if B is in A, then B complement is A minus B. So just a few things to say about this. The union is everything in A along with everything in B. The intersection is the things that are in both A and B. The difference is in is the things in A that are not in B. And the complement's the same, but since we lose the notation A when we write B complement, you have to really be sure you know which set A you're talking about. And the size is done with bars. In other places, you might see that as a number symbol. Okay, so now let's do the four principles in terms of sets. Suppose A and B are sets. Well, if they have no overlap, so this is a symbol for an empty set. So this says if A and B don't have any elements in common, then the number of things in A union B is just the number of things in A plus the number of things in B. Subtraction principle says that if B is inside of A, then the number of things in A minus B is the number of things in A minus the number of things in B. So these are pretty straightforward. If you have a bunch of things and then you take some away, then the number you have left is the difference. So you can see the similarity with these principles and the principles we talked about before. But now we have a little more information because we know not only how many things there are, but also which th we're kind of keeping track of which things are in which set. In order to do the multiplication principle, I want to do another Lego example. So the Lego example, we're going to think about a little bit differently. So A here, A is going to be the set. Um, Pretend these are all different, like I've labeled them one, two, three, four, five, because things in sets have to be different. But I want to think about A as being a set of five different rectangular blocks. And then I want to think about B as being a set of colors. So one color is yellow, and I have another color, which is blue, red, and, and white. We're going to form the Cartesian product, which is just like the xy plane that you've seen in so many classes before. And 
next. And the idea with the Cartesian product is that our things are going to be indexed both by which number they were in the set, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, and by the color. And so you can see how the multiplication principle might be in play here because the number of blocks is the number of yellow blocks times the number of colors. And in this case, that's five times four, which is 20. So that's the multiplication principle in terms of sets. The division principle is that if you, if you have a set of 20 things and you can divide it into columns or colors, then the number of things in each column is going to be total number divided by the number of columns. So that's the intuition there. And let's, let's see how we're going to write that a little bit more formally, a little more complicated now. So the multiplication principle, in order to do that, we need to look at the Cartesian product, which is A cross B. And A cross B is the set of pairs of things, little a, little b, where a is in a and b is in b. Just think about this like the xy plane. a is the choices for x, b is the choices for y, and we're making a wall, um, a grid of choices for x and y in two dimensions. And so the multiplication principle says that the number in the Cartesian product is the number in A times the number in B. So this is an example of what's called set builder notation. This bar here just means these are conditions on the elements that we've described at the beginning. Division principle, maybe I won't write down. You can look it up in the text. But the idea is that we make a set partition. If we can divide A up into a bunch of other sets. So if we can divide A up into a union of K different sets. And if each of these sets has size M, then we know that M is the number of things in A divided by the number of subsets. Oh, and I should have added here, but I'm kind of out of space, that the, these subsets have to have trivial intersection. All right, so next time we'll talk about more about sets.